Hello, welcome to Pecan Corner. I'm Tina, and t today I'm making wild plum jelly. My um, my dad, my stepmom, and my uh, um, and their family uh, gathered a bunch of wild plums and gave to me, so I didn't even have to gather them myself. As you can see, they're small, um, but they're and they're real tart little plums. This is what I grew up. Uh, grew up with and so yesterday I cooked um, I took the the plums and I set them in the set them in the refrigerator while we took care of some other things and so uh, I've extracted the juice so now I need to uh, uh, drain remove the plums and uh, and drain that off I'll make uh, more out of this batch of plums these weren't quite ripe they were still kind of hard so I've, I've kept them in the fridge and I'm letting them ripen up some more before I cook them. So I'll be right back. Okay, now then, I'm, uh, oh, let's see, where am I? <laughs> Let me tell you what I've got going on here. Um, I've, uh, I want to use uh, this pan to cook my jelly in, so I poured all of my juice um, out of it into some bottles. I've set aside my my plum pulp. Now I'll, I've got another video, an older one, that shows how I made plum butter uh, using this pulp. pulp. So you can go look that one up um, and uh, and see how I do that. Cause, so you don't have to throw this away. You can you can run it through a food mill or, or through a juicer to get the seeds out of it and then you can use that pulp. Now, in the old days we didn't use to uh, uh, process jelly uh, nor even actually uh, necessarily seal them with uh, with, with um, suction lids. Uh, we just pour uh, paraffin on top of it. Um, now they say that we shouldn't do that, so they they want us to uh, process our jellies. So as soon as we fill the jars, I'll be popping them into the canner for a couple of minutes um, to uh, uh, to process. But but first I have to. Now, I, I do a lot of pressure canning, and pressure canning, I don't have to sterilize my jars. But with water bath canning, you always have to start with sterile jars. These are new. Um, you can reuse your jars, um, but I'm all amount of full right now, and so I had to buy more uh, jars for this. Um, so, but even though they're new, they still need to be sterilized, not the lids. Um, the the lids, the new materials on the lids, uh, we're not supposed to boil them or, or heat them um, before we before we use them, um, according to the manufacturer's directions. So we don't have to uh, we don't have to warm them anymore. Now the warming the glass, um, even after it's sterile, is is simply to keep it from breaking when you pour that hot jelly in there. It helps. Um, I don't always keep mine in. Uh, the hot water until I'm ready to pour up the jelly. Usually I'll, I'll pull them out and have them sitting here and, and they're still warm enough that they won't, uh, won't break that way. But uh, a lot of people will leave theirs in the hot water and then pull it out one at a time. I just can't do that many, t that many different things at once. I kind of have to get a little assembly line going to be successful. So my water's fixing to boil so I'm fixing to put my jars in empty and uh, let them uh, uh, let them simmer for um, I believe it's uh, eight minutes. Let me see what my little book says. I got lucky um, on, on clearance at the grocery store. They had uh, uh, the ball blue book on on clearance, so I was able to get me a new one of those. Of course, everything we're doing with this is hot and with steam and such as that. So you need to have all your tools handy and uh, you need to, uh, let me turn the water down now that it's boiling. Uh, you need to have all your tools handy and, and all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, hot pads. And, and uh, if you don't have um, a, a jar lifter, buy one. This is an important tool that you do need to spend the money on because it's just nothing will, uh, Nothing else will take its place. It's designed for pulling up, lifting those jars out when they're hot and keeping them straight up and down. And, and there aren't any other tools that'll do that. So it's not, it's not something you can make do. I'm gonna keep my water in this, uh, in this pan going because this is the same pan that I will 
um, process the jars in once the jelly's put into them. So um, now I'm going to let them, uh, I've got my jars down in there and they're uh, submerged in the water and I'm going to let them uh, uh, let them simmer for eight minutes to be sure that they're sterile. Then I'll be back. Okay, now another thing, um, you can use your, you know, regular water bath canner, but if you don't have one, a stock pot works pretty good. But you need a rack in the bottom. Um, if you don't have a rack that, that'll fit in the bottom before you put your jars in there, um, you can use a folded towel. I'm going to use a, a, a dishcloth there and just put it in the bottom and my jars will sit on that and that'll, that'll keep them off the bottom while they're, uh, while they're processing in there. So I'm just going to let that sit there um, and that water stay uh, warm while I, or hot while I work on making the jelly here. Alright, now then. I've always used Sure Gel and I just use the recipe that's on the pack in the in the box uh, that comes with it for cooked jelly, for cooked plum jelly is the one that I use. There's also, there are other recipes. Uh, there's one in the ball book. There's one in my uh, National Center for Home Preservation uh, cookbook. But you can, uh, you, you can use whichever one you prefer. They're nearly all the same. They're very similar. Um, if you buy the large containers of pectin, um, the, the ball recipe will tell you how much of that to measure out. It's six tablespoons of the, of the classic pectin. But the, the Sure Gel is the only way we used to ever see it, uh, pectin, and it comes pre-measured. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, five and a half cups of juice into my... Uh, into my um, um, my pot and um, let it start getting hot and then we're going to go down where did they put I'm trying to I know what I do but I'm trying to find where they where they've hidden all our directions they've got it kind of messed up here there we go um, we want to have our sugar uh, measured out into a bowl before we start. Um, so while my juice is heating, um, I want to measure out my measure out my sugar because you need to add the sugar all at one time. And if you're trying to measure it and add it, it won't go in there all at once. You need it just to pour, dump it all in in one fell swoop. So let me get that done real quick. I I just want to say I don't like the way they've printed these instructions. They start you off with the cooked jelly directions and then all of a sudden say, okay, now go over to step two of cooked jam directions and so you have to go find out where you are there. That's just silly. They used to have it all together and it was nice and easy to follow and now they've got um, a whole bunch of space taken up with pictures and, and stuff that are really unnecessary. That's my little growls for the day. All right, I have six and a half cups of uh, sugar, uh, just as the recipe calls for. You cannot reduce the sugar. Don't say that's too much sugar and try to leave it out. Your jelly won't gel. If you want to make a low sugar jelly, you need to buy the kind of, of uh, pectin that calls that says low sugar, and you have to follow those instructions. I don't use that stuff. I just use make the natural kind, 100% um, natural kind. Um, so you can make jam that has no gel to it with with lower sugar but that's not the same product and that's not what we're making here so if you want to do a jam with lower sugar uh, you can find a recipe for that instead but that includes the pulp uh, which which like I say is not what we're doing here so I need uh, five and a half cups of juice where's my measuring And a half cup. All right, there we go. Somebody asked me uh, one recipe 
um, if you can double it in, in a bigger pot uh, to just make more at one time. I've never had good luck with that. Um, when I've tried to do that, my jelly has not gelled. And so I always just do one batch at a time, even though it's a kind of a pain sometimes if you're trying to um, make a lot of it up at once like this. I'm going to have to put some of this juice in the freezer because it's just going to take me a while to get it all made up. But that's okay too. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. Some people may be able to double their recipes, but I haven't had good luck with doing so. Um, okay, now I'm going to bring this uh, bring this to a boil. Turn the fire back up. I'm going to stir in my fruit, my, my sure gel. This, I use the powdered sure gel. If you're using Serto, you'll need to use, or, you know, liquid pe pectin. You'll have to uh, follow the, uh, the instructions that come with that. This recipe is only good for this powdered pectin. Um, so, I, there, there are differences in every step of the way in this stuff. Um, I've tried to substitute the liquid before if I ran out of the, the powder and then my jelly wouldn't set up or it would be too tart or something. So, um, And then when you make pepper jelly, the only pepper jelly recipe that I have had success with is one that does use the liquid pectin. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's uh, kind of funny, funny stuff uh, trying to get it to gel. Um, it, it's funny because jelly is the first canning product that most of us make because it's very safe but at the same time it's actually one of the more difficult uh, products to, to can. So if you can make jelly then uh, if, you, if you can successfully make jelly then you shouldn't be afraid of any other kind of canning because you'll actually do um, the, the, the other things are actually easier I mean a little bit of a a little bit of a tizzy <laughs> about this because I'm getting a late start today. And uh, so I'm bringing this up to a full rolling boil that doesn't stop when it's stirred down. Let me see if I can get you over here. We can see better. My uh, there we go. Is that better? Okay. We want this to be a full rolling boil, and then we're going to pour in our sugar and, bring, and stir and stir and stir and bring it back to a full rolling boil and let it boil for exactly one minute. And of course you can't abandon things when you're in the middle of this. You can't walk away. Um, and uh, you have to stay right on top of everything because it will boil over on you in a heartbeat especially once you put that uh, sugar in it it doesn't hurt to have your fire as high as it will go when you're at this stage it's one of those things where you Everything kind of progresses a little bit slowly, and then all of a sudden, everything happens at once. Wild plum jelly was the only jelly I remember eating when I was growing up. The family always made it. They went out and gathered wild plums, and uh, uh, everybody made jelly out of it. And that was in southern Oklahoma, where you know the plum thickets grow, and. Uh, down here in Texas, um, the, it's the same way. They all, uh, I'm in mean, central Texas, and there's plum thickets all along the roadsides. And uh, so this is very traditional, traditional uh, Texas food. Um, it was a good way of preserving the, the juice and turning it into a, a good high calorie food that wouldn't spoil and that uh, people, you know, children were willing to eat. Um, 
when I had some for sale at the at the farmers market a couple of years ago. Um, um, when one man was telling me he remembered times in his family when when in the depth of winter that'd be all they'd have they'd have left to eat would be uh, they they they'd be a month or so on uh, plum jelly until they started getting some more some more crops in. Okay, it's starting to boil up now. All right, there it goes now. Time to pour in my sugar all at once. And you want to immediately stir that in, too. You don't want to let that sugar sit on the bottom of your pan. I, boy, I made that mistake one time, and my sugar, you know, melted on hard, turned to candy hard on the bottom of that pan before I could get it stirred in. Uh, and there was another mess to have to clean up. I have made a lot of messes making jelly in my time. Uh, <laughs> so whatever you do that you think is... Wrong. You know, if your jelly doesn't set, you can try recook, recooking it, or you can just use it as syrup. Uh, you know, you don't have to throw it out just because it just because it didn't set. <laughs> um, some people uh, will put, uh, you know, they'll recook it and put more pectin in it, and they end up with a real tart jelly that's very, very uh, stiff. Um, and some people like that. So, you know, don't. Don't fret if you don't get it perfect the first time. Um, it's uh, it's one of those projects that you just you just do it and do it, and eventually it uh, it comes out. Notice I'm using a metal spoon to cook this, uh, you know, to stir this with. It's funny, that's that's the thing they recommend that you do, and you, you skim it with a metal spoon, too, um, which is interesting because I was just making sauerkraut the other day, and the big deal there is do not use metal in it. So, uh, uh, until it's, you know, until it's ready, I did use a metal spoon to scoop it out and, and jar it up with, but, but uh, it's kind of interesting that... Uh, the different different kinds of pans and things that you have to have for these these things I'll turn this back on in just a minute when it comes to a full rolling boil I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of butter um, that'll help uh, reduce the foaming and I'll lose less uh, lose less jelly to, to foam. Of course, if you've got children, they're going to want to enjoy that foam when you get it out. So, all right, I'll be back in just a second when this starts boiling. Okay, it's boiling hard. Now I need to time it for one minute. Get that hard rolling boil. See how that's coming up there? Can't stop stirring for a second when this is happening. Um, and uh, I have to try to stir it down. Otherwise it'll just boil all over and you don't want to spill this on you. It'll, it'll burn, burn bad. And you don't want children around when you're making jelly. You, this is not something you can let the little ones help you with. They need to be out of the way and you need an adult around who can tend to them and keep them out of your way because uh, you, you won't be able to stop and go and look after them when you're doing this project. So it needs to either be when the kids are at school or when there's another adult around who can, can babysit them and keep them completely out of the room. I wouldn't even want them in the other side of the room because kids can move fast and I just think it would be really dangerous. So um, that's okay. There we go. Now turn fire off and uh, keep stirring it until that uh, boiling stops. It'll, it'll fall off pretty rapidly now. There we go. Move it off the fire. 
start cooling down. There we go. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna. Now, as soon as it boils down, stops boiling, we're gonna start dishing it up. Okay. Now let's see if I can. Uh, if you have a ladle, um, a ladle will work for this. Um, here's this. Let me show you how to skim it. See, you might have to skim a little bit of uh, of the foam off the top. But I don't have too much in here because it was I used that little bit of butter, and that helps. All right, now I just use my my metal um, measuring cups. I found those are really good for for anything like this. They hold a lot. They're easy for me to manage. Leave uh, leave headspace in your jars. Always leave a, an inch of headspace in your jars. You've got you notice I've got mine sitting on a on a towel. That way, uh, if I had them just sitting on the counter, if I spilled jelly, it might either make them stick to the counter or it might make them slide. And I, I certainly don't want uh, jars of, of hot liquid jelly sliding around on my counters. Um, that's dangerous, so that's why I always put a towel down anytime I'm canning for my jars to sit on. The, the wet, the water, you know, might make them slide, any, anything like that, so uh, that's why I use a towel. I'm going to finish dipping this up and then I'll be right back. Right, now I've got 10 jars out of that. Now I'm going to use a uh, wet paper towels to wipe them off with. You can also use a wet, uh, uh, clean, wet cotton towel to wipe them off with. Anything that's lint free. And I'm going to put my lids on. Finger tight. I'm going to have to get me a towel to hold on to them with. They're kind of hot. There we go. Now these will seal themselves if you don't process them. I'll just let you know that. And if you wanted to not process them and keep them in the refrigerator, that would be just fine too. Pick it up until that lid's on there. Because it's hot, hot, hot. Let me get the rest of these on. Right now, my boiling water bath, I'm going to put these in and process them for five minutes. And I know it's a pain, but you know, it doesn't hurt us to be as safe as we can with the food that we're processing. That's, that's why we're doing it ourselves, is to have safe food. So, uh, don't don't object just because grandma didn't do it this way don't object to to getting up to date and doing it doing it right it won't hurt anything it's an extra it's an extra five minutes is all it is and uh, these little half pints um, my stock pot here will hold seven of them so the other three I'll process after I after I do these. I'm going to bring this to a boil and I'm going to boil them. I'm going to boil them in there for five minutes after they return to a boil. While that's working, uh, just another minute there. I'll show you. You can kind of tell in the bottom of your uh, your your pan if your gel is going to be good or not. See, it's it's gelling up really good uh, just from the natural cooling of being the last in the pan. So. Um, you can tell without waiting for your jars uh, whether your uh, whether your jelly is going to do good. Now, if, it, if your jars don't gel up right away, don't worry about it. Sometimes they'll they'll gel after they sit a couple of days. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, now our timer's gone, and now we're going to pull out our jars. And now we're going to leave them sit undisturbed here on the counter. So that's the other thing. You want to be sure that you do this at a time when you don't have to move them for 24 hours. Um, they need to sit until they gel up. Sometimes 12 hours will do it, but uh, uh, 24 is, is really a lot better. 
So I'm, I put a little vinegar in my water uh, to keep the, you know, the film from the, uh, careful, that, that's not a good thing to do, to keep the film of the, uh, of the minerals from, uh, from getting on my jars. I'm going to go ahead and put these other three in there while I'm pulling these out so that my, All right, now then. All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to let these process, and then I'll be back and show you all the final product. Take care. Good morning. All right, we've had uh, the evening for the for the je je jelly to set up, and as we can see, it's uh, got a beautiful color. Uh, this wild plum jelly has just uh, got a real crisp, uh, flavor to it, nice and fresh, and um, and it's it's gelled really nicely. So I'm real happy with this one. You can see how that it's not not sliding around in the jar. I had uh, I have two of them that didn't seal. Now that's unusual. Nearly always jelly will seal. These are the lids that came with the jars, but it's real obvious these are lids that were manufactured last year. Um, Ball and Kerr have introduced a new jar lid this year. When they took the BPA out of the uh, material for sealing the jars, um, it made a weaker, they don't admit it, but it. But we've all noticed it. It made the, the seals much weaker and we had much more failure. Um, but this year, uh, the company has announced, they're actually calling this the most important improvement in canning jar lids in 30 years, which means that 30 years ago they had much better lids. Um, so they, uh, uh, th that they're actually have come out with a, using a new substance and they're saying that the seals will last 18 months. Um, now, whether that's going to mean that they have a design flaw that's going to cause them to fail after 18 months once they've sealed that will remain to be seen but it sounds to me like they've corrected the issue that we're all running into where we have um, a substantial percentage of jars that, that don't seal um, but anyway um, I got 10 jars of jelly out of that 10 half pint jars um, out of that one batch um, and uh, we're really happy we like it a lot so Thank you very much. Appreciate you stopping by my kitchen.